Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through Him who gives me strength. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Welcome to week three, uh, last week of our series entitled Give, Save, Live. Uh, As we unpack uh, our section of scripture for today from 1 Timothy, uh, to get us thinking about it, I have a question uh, for you. If you were to describe the kind of money manager that you are with a a term, with a title, which one of the following would it be? Uh, How many of you, by a show of hands, would describe yourself as a saver? Uh, Your money management style is you're more inclined to save in your life. Okay, we got a couple savers here. All right. Uh, how many of you would describe yourself as spenders? Uh, when, when, when it's between saving and spending, which one is you? I'm waiting for my family's hands to be shown over here. <laughs> Don't judge. We're, 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 we love each other, so we can put our hands up. Saver or spender? Uh, when I do pre-marriage counseling, it's one of the lists of qualities that, that I have future husbands and wives go through. And it, Let me tell you, it's always interesting when they identify themselves one way and they identify the person they're marrying uh, the other way. (laughs) Because when you put a saver and a spender together, uh, there's some work that's going to have to be done in order for you to get on the same page. Uh, Money management styles are different. Uh, Being a saver or spender isn't right or wrong in and of itself. uh, But that's kind of the what that describes our our money management style. But there's more behind it. Why might you be more inclined to be a spender when it comes to managing your money? And why are some of you more willing to be inclined to to saving? Uh, There's probably a filter or a funnel, a a lens through which you view life. There's a why behind the what of your money management style. And maybe to help you understand that today as we get into really unpacking and understanding the importance of, uh, of week three, the live part, how we use the resources that are left Uh, how we view the the rest of what God has given to us after we've first given and and then saved, uh, that that might help us understand why we tilt one way or another and and maybe help us identify the issue in play. Uh, So perhaps uh, a few hashtags might help you figure out the why behind the what of your money management style. Are you hashtag FOMO when it comes to your money management? Anyone know what that means? In the first service, they're like hashtags, don't know what that is. Um, (laughs) Fear of missing out. Uh, when you manage your money, uh, are, are, are there times when, when you view your money through the filter and funnel of, uh, of spending in a certain way because you're, you're afraid of missing out on something? Uh, maybe you're a, a, a saver who, who fears a, 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 on missing out of a long retirement with a, a place down south, and, and so you pack it away and you pack it away and you pack it away. What is it that, that maybe drives you? Is it a fear of missing out when it comes to how you manage your money? Uh, Maybe you're the the next one. Maybe you're YOLO. You might know that one. You you only live once. So you look at your resources, you manage your money, and you're like, hey, we we, we only live once, so so we need to spend. (laughs) And and, and we need to enjoy, and and we need to live it up, and and you only live once. Or maybe over the course of this series, if you've been here all the weeks, you you started to buy into this idea uh, that that we've been selling, that God in his word lays out a different money management style that it's called give, save, live. Maybe you're not sold on it yet. Uh, Maybe you're uncertain about all that it means. Maybe uh, there's a little trepidation still inside of you that that is concerned, but but, but just maybe God has something different that should be the the filter and the funnel through which we view our resources and the way we manage our money. And and if you've been here the the three weeks, you heard how we talked about give, then save, and, and today live. And this is really important. Because I believe that this last piece is oftentimes the one 
that, that can make or break people in this life and, and can also impact people for eternity. It's really the issue that we need to get it right, that, that if fear of missing out or you only live once is, is more of the funnel that you, you view money management through, you might be in danger uh, of the issue. Uh, the Apostle Paul describes the issue in these words from, from 1 Timothy chapter 6. If we truly want to live and, and understand how God wants us to use our resources as we live in a godly way, we, we need to understand the issue in play. Those who want to get rich, you know, when you, when you hear little kids uh, interviewed about what they want to be when they get old, and uh, when you hear people in high school say, well, what's your goals? A lot of times it's to, to get more money, to get rich, right? Those who want to get rich fall into temptation, uh, and a trap and the many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Uh, now before we go on and see the, how that plays out, uh, one of the things that you need to understand, the, the Apostle Paul and, and the Bible don't say money is a bad thing. They, they don't say having money is a, a sinful thing. Uh, no, it, it's not about money. It's about the person whose hands it's in. It's the love of money. It's when we take a good thing and it, and it becomes a, a first thing. And God wants us to understand that, that if we invert the order, if we don't manage our money in the way that God would have us manage it, give, save, and, and then live, if we invert it and, and live comes first and, and we fear of missing out or we, we think we only live once so we got to have more and get more and, and get more by any means necessary, then we're, we're endangering our spiritual life. And it digs a root. If you were here a few months ago and we launched our mission vision series, what we as a church believe is vital for, for each member of our church and for a child of God is to plant roots in five key areas of our spiritual life to be grounded so that the, when the storms of life blow, we don't get knocked over. One of them was give, right? You know, how, how do we use our resources in a godly way? How do we give of our time in a, in a godly way? And we want this root planted deep. But when we invert the order and we live first before we give, when, when we're driven by the desire for more, here's what can happen. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. When the, when the root that is planted is a love for money, the roots uh, that then are grown produce fruit that we don't want. And see, here's the issue that is in front of us today. It, when you live before you give, if you invert the order, whether it's because you fear of missing out or you only live once or whatever else is driving that behavior, you, you, you want to keep up with the Joneses, you might plant the wrong root. And that wrong root will produce rotten fruit, spiritually rotten fruit. And it might actually produce fruit that is corrupt and leads to ruin. You see, this is why it matters to, to have the right money management style. This is why we, in this series we want a completely different look at, at how God would have us manage our resources, to give generously and give first, then to save because Jesus saves, and then to live. And who of us hasn't fallen prey to this, right? <laughs> you can look back at your life, and you can probably see a time when you made a money decision where you inverted the order. Or maybe the desire for something that you thought you needed, you, you'd fear of missing out on something, uh, made, it, made it so that you had a financial decision that, that probably wasn't the, the best one for you. I was thinking about this this past week. My wife and I, when we lived in Illinois, we had uh, this black Hyundai car that uh, we had bought, I think, before we had gotten married. And then I don't know why it was that we thought this was a wise decision, but we bought a little red bug, a beetle, that seemed like a really cool car for a pastor to drive around in Champaign-Urbana. And then we had kids. And once you have kids, you know, you got to upgrade. you got to have a little more room. And it was all the rage to have a, an SUV in the day. So we got an SUV, and, and that was a pretty pricey decision with a, a household that was built off of one salary. <laughs> um, and then our daughter went to, to kindergarten class, and, and Holly said, we, we might miss out on all the things that come with... Our kids being in school, we're going to have to drive other kids around. And I know we're only two years into that five-year uh, contract, but, but let's trade that car in and let's get a minivan because we need a minivan now. And, and, and let's just add that onto the bill. Like we were paying an exorbitant amount for a minivan. Probably not the wisest decision. But we feared of missing out. Uh, making that decision is 
not an eternity breaker, but what happens when we, we go down that path and we continue to, to live like we only live once and it determines how we use our resources. When it causes us then to stop and to say, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to not save because I just want to enjoy life more. Or I, I'm going to fear of missing out and so uh, I, I'm not going to give back to God. Then, then you can see how that, that, that wrong root might produce some rotten fruit. And if we're honest, all of us have, have failed in this area. And in fact, the truth is it's such a big issue in the country in which we live. Uh, we live in a country where the average median household income is $71,000. Now, I know you might be higher or lower uh, on that scale, but that's the average for Americans. Pastor Mike, who preached in our 1030 service and down at town at the core last week, talked about the global rich list. And if you punched your number in, if you make around $50,000, you are in the top 1% of the world, the billions of the people who live in the world. The reality is you and I have been blessed very greatly, even if we're under that number. And yet why is it that in this great country where we are so blessed that the average American household credit card debt is $16,000? I'm not talking about car debt or mortgage debt or school loan debt. I'm talking about credit card debt. Is it because our hearts are, are driven for a desire of more that maybe we're planting the wrong root? That we're willing to, to live beyond our means as if this life is the be all and end all? I would have to tell you that it's an issue in, in each and every one of our lives. It's an issue in our world today and our God wants us to get it right. He doesn't... He doesn't want that issue to become the reality of our eternity. And he wants us to understand something. That for every time we've failed, for, for every time we've fallen short, for every time we feared missing out and, and we put ourselves first and not God first, when we, when we lived and, and wanted to live some more and we, we ran after money, God, God has a message for you and for me. And in fact, it comes back to this series. God so loved the world that he gave. Now, for every time that you failed to give first and give generously, God gave generously and God gave first his one and only son that whoever believes in him has eternal life. Now, for every time you, you, you failed to maybe save and, and, and do something that you knew was godly because you, you, you only lived once, you, know, you do know that Jesus saved. He gave up his life so that, so that you and I might have eternal life. And because we know that is true, then, then we can apply this truth. So if you failed and, and maybe you're the one with the debt, there, there's, there's time for us to, to look at how God would have us live and, and not live out of fear and make money decisions because we only live once, but to instead adopt a new money management style to give, to save, and to live, and, and to give in light of uh, who God is. This is how that next section goes. And I so want you to get this because I think it will change everything of how you view uh, the living and the use of your resources. Command those who are rich and and I consider all of us in, in, in different ways to, to be blessed by God that with that title in this present world. Not to be arrogant nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain. Money comes and goes. It wasn't 100 years ago when the stock market bottomed out and the Great Depression started. You might have the greatest 401k and a, a retirement plan like, like no one else. And, you might be thinking at age 60, you're going to get out of the rat race and enjoy the good life. But you know what? Tomorrow might be the day it tanks. It might all disappear. And you might have a great job right now and things might be going well, but your plant might close and, and things might get difficult. If, you're, if your hope is in, is in wealth, if, if, if your hope is in riches, God says it's uncertain. It's not, it, it's not guaranteed to be here tomorrow, but there is something certain. Put your hope in God. Uh, God who gives and God who saves and God who loves and, and has promised you a great gift. God the Father said, here is my son whom I love. And, and Jesus went to the cross and extended his arms so that, that you and I could be welcomed in the Father's family. And, and he sent his Holy Spirit to work faith in our hearts so that, that we had hope, certain hope, something rock solid, greater than anything this life has to offer, treasures beyond our belief. And so he says, if you've been blessed with, with, with wealth, if you've been blessed with possessions, then, then consider them this way. Things for our enjoyment. Command those who have been blessed in this life to do good, the passage says. To be rich in good deeds, to be generous and willing to share in the same way when we, when we live differently, when the Spirit lives in us, when we live in light of God who, who gave and is forgiven for all of our sins, we can hashtag 
give, save, live, our, our money management style, because we know that we have a far greater treasure. And when we live this way, when the Spirit's fruit that's produced is uh, life-changing, then for themselves as a firm foundation in the coming age so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. If you, if you live by the motto, you only live once, you're forgetting this reality that for us as Christians, no, that's not true. <laughs> this life is, is just a precursor to the life that will follow. <laughs> so how I view and use my resources is going to be different because there's treasures in heaven that are being stored up for me. <laughs> So when I save, I can save those treasures to benefit others here on earth because I, I long for others to join me in heaven where there are even greater treasures. And, and I long for people to see in me what God applies here, the spirit at work in me, the spirit living in me and, and living through me. Here, here's the truth. We don't want to be that, that rotten root that produces bad fruit. We want to, to celebrate what God has given to us and be money managers that, that give first, that save, and then live. And when we do you'll have Jesus roots. You'll have roots planted in the gospel that, that celebrate and know that you have life and have it to the full with him. You'll have Jesus roots that are, that are founded on his love that, that says don't store up treasures on earth, but, but only celebrate and store up treasures in heaven because those will never perish, fade, or spoil. When you plant Jesus roots, when you, when you grow deeper in him, when, when, when giving comes first and, and saving is a part of your lifestyle, then you'll produce the Spirit's fruits in how you live. Now, I want to share with you a little chart that kind of helps you understand those spirits, fruits, what they look like on the outside when you plant those deep roots that give and save and then live. But I want you to think about how cool God is. So God is the owner of everything, true or false? True. All the things that you own are from God, true or false? True. All the money you have in your bank account, your 401k, your, your savings, God's or yours? God's. He's given it to you. He's entrusted it to you. And here's the thing about God. He says, give first. Even if you apply the Old Testament standard in the New Testament, he doesn't give us a percentage, but in the Old Testament it was 10. He said, give back to God 10% first. So let's just use that as a number for an example. I'm not trying to guilt you into saying that should be your number, but just consider it. And then consider experts who talk about saving, say about 10 to 15%. You should save about 15% of your income uh, in order to have a retirement that that is good and solid and can be a blessing and, and leave a legacy. So just think about that. that, that that's 25%. 25% of the things that are God's. <laughs> anyway, he, he, he kind of sets aside first. You know what he, what's left? 75%. God literally says, I want you to use 75% of the resources I have given to you to live. And I'm not going to play puppet master. Uh, I'm not going to tell you it should be spent here, there, or everywhere, but I'm going to give you some guidelines and give you some principles because I want to see the Spirit's fruit flow out of how you view and use the rest. And, and here's what the Spirit's fruit are. You remember the passage from Galatians where it talks about the Spirit's fruits? So when we plant Jesus' roots that love and know God because we're first loved by God, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance is patience. So if you're making note, patience. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. God says literally the fruit of the Spirit has no speed limit. <laughs> I, I want you to be one of those trees that's uh, got so much fruit on it that the limbs are breaking and um, I'll repair them and I'll restore them like abundant fruit. There's no, there's no law against how much fruit God wants you to produce. <laughs> it's only possible when you have Jesus roots, when you uh, live in light of that with our resources and give, save, and live. And, and, and here's what I think it looks like. How, how these fruits of the Spirit, when we, when we plant those Jesus roots and we know what God has given to us and we know that Jesus has saved us, these fruits will be on display. The fruit of the Spirit is love. What does love do? In the Bible, the word love means you first. It's sacrificial. It's unselfish. That's what God describes as love. So when the fruit of the Spirit is love, it puts other people first. How does this play out in how we view the rest and use the rest? Here's a passage that drives it home. Anyone who does not provide for their relatives and especially for their own household is denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. God says, if you don't provide for your family, you're, you're not doing something that even the heathen, ungodly people of the world get. It's loving parents and families to use your resources to be a blessing to your kids. Have you ever thought about that when you, when you write out the mortgage check each and every month? Or are you one of those people who's like cringing because you got to give your money to some bank that is charging you interest? Or do you literally think as you're writing it out, Lord, this home, this roof, this dinner table, this food that's, that's in this fridge is... 
is a blessing from you that I get to use to be a blessing to my family. I'm an empty nester now, and, and, and we don't have our kids around, but, but we have stories from 20 plus years of, of life where, where we were raising them in our home, and, and we get to remember those, those are blessings from God when we use our resources to provide for our family. Don't be the person who cringes when your kid grows three inches because you got to buy him new pants. Instead, say, Thank you, God, for giving me money <laughs> to provide for my family. Those are, those are good things. God gives us the resources so that we can love and provide with what's left. That 75% is to be used to provide for those others in your life with what's left. <laughs> Thank God for it and, and use it that way. Then there's joy. Here's a passage uh, that I love from the book of Ecclesiastes. This is what I've observed, it's that it's appropriate for a person to eat and to drink and to find satisfaction in their labor under the sun because God's only given us a few days of life, for this is their lot. Moreover, when God gives someone wealth and possessions and the ability to enjoy them, to accept their lot and be happy in their toil, to enjoy them is a gift of God. And they seldom reflect on the days of their life because God keeps them occupied with gladness. And when you give, save, and live, the, the, the Spirit's fruits that, that, that come out are joy, that you get to enjoy what's left. When you enjoy what's left, it allows you to, to enjoy a good steak and not feel guilty. It, it allows you to have a feast like we're going to have on Thanksgiving. And, and trust me, if you're coming to my house, you're going to see deep fried turkey and cheesy potatoes and green bean casserole and this amazing crazy stuffing that my mom used to make that I could eat the whole batch of and it probably it would be like 10,000 calories. Oh, I'm going to enjoy a lot of that. It's not wrong. <laughs> Those are good things from God. But don't overindulge. Don't get yourself sick. But, it, but to enjoy the food is a good thing. Maybe your thing is you got a vacation home up north and you've used your resources well and, and you love the woods. Find joy in, in, in going. Maybe your thing is hunting and, and you're off this weekend and you're listening to the podcast. You can say, God, this is so great that you've blessed me with all these resources that I get to choose to do this. Maybe your thing is to, to, to go to sporting events. Maybe you, your thing is to, to go on vacation and appreciate the world all around us and, and see different places so that you can celebrate all that God has made. God gives us these things to enjoy, so be thankful and enjoy them. Don't feel guilty, but, but the fruit, fruit of the Spirit is to find joy in, in, in living. And patience. You, you heard that expressed in those words. Uh, patience is a little bit more difficult for us, uh, but it accepts what's left. Some people have been given more than, than I've been given. Uh, sometimes in seasons in my life, I have more in my checkbook than, than other times. So I can accept and and be content with what's left. That within the rest, God has allowed me to provide and to, to enjoy, but, but be okay. Uh, to be okay with what I have and, and be patient. Because God has provided all that I need. He's, he's given me uh, all the blessings that I, that I have and he's promised he won't allow me to go without anything I need. So I can accept what's left. That's a fruit of the spirit that's on display in my resources and, and, and what I have left. The next one is goodness. I so love this one. You guys heard this phrase in the world today, right? It's better to give than to receive. You think that's found in the Bible somewhere? I don't think it is a passage, but it's a biblical truth. Um, share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. That's, that's literally goodness. <laughs> Just think of $71,000 is the average. And if you take 75% of that, that's 50-some thousand. I'm not sure. I'm good with my math, but it's somewhere in there. Um, and, and God says, use it to provide for your family. Enjoy life and enjoy it to the full. Uh, appreciate the good things of this world. Be content at different times, but use some of it to be a blessing to others. Here at our church, uh, I'm, I'm challenging our church this weekend to, to take every ornament off that tree. This is for the homeless connection tree that's out there. There are different things on there from gift cards to things that are needed by people who, you know, don't have a roof that they call their own to live under. That for whatever reason, they're... they're they're down on their luck or they've been disconnected from their family. And, and this is one of our mission partners that we can be a blessing to. Or maybe it's to help those boys and girls who, whose parents don't have the ability to put five million presents under the trees like, like I've been so blessed in my life to experience and to do. That, that we can be a blessing and, and give these to a place where they distribute them to, to families who have nothing. And so the little kid can open a present. Uh, their heart can be filled with joy to, to experience some of that. You know, God has given us opportunities like this or others to, to use our resources to be good and kind to other people. Don't just live like you only live once, but celebrate that other people in this life are lacking. And a fruit of the Spirit is to be good and, 
and to practice hospitality. Uh, here's the last two, self-control and peace, these fruit of the spirits. My God will meet all your needs. We can go to the passage. My God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. And so we can practice self-control. God's going to meet all of our needs. And we can find peace. It's the last two fruits of the spirit. Uh, self-control allows us to, to be okay with uh, what's left and wise. I might come across two good opportunities, but, but self-control says I'm going to pick one and, and not do both. Self-control might say in the future, hey, Tim, you don't need a new Pathfinder and a, a new minivan, but a used car is a great vehicle. And I'm so thankful that over the last many years of our life, we've never bought another new car because it's been a good use of resources. It's self-control. And don't get me wrong, new cars are great, but um, it's not something that we've done. But you can choose to do it. Self-control picks. Is this wise or, or not wise? Is this best for me or, or not? Is this the right time or not? Self-control is wise with what's left. And then the last fruit of the Spirit, the one that I want your tree to be so overwhelmed with, is this, peace. Because here's the thing. When you give, save, live, uh, when your money management style celebrates that, that God is the generous giver of all things, that, that Jesus is your Savior from all of your sins and every failure when it comes to the use of your money, then you have the Spirit's fruit of peace. And, and the Spirit's final fruit of peace is this, that you know that what's next is greater than what's left. That God has given you so much to use and to, to live on, but you know what? Jesus came into this world to, to give you life and have it to the full in heaven. And so when you use the, the things that you have and celebrate life, I, I pray that you enjoy what's left, accept what's left, and shares what's, share what's left. But, but I pray above all that you know that's what next and what's beyond the, this life is even better. Because <laughs> you've been, been given the, the gift of salvation and eternal life. That's the, the best give and the ultimate save and the eternal life. You see, I'm so excited uh, that, that we as a church get to experience this. And uh, I pray that I, this helps me and you all get to call me out. I'm the biggest Christmas Grinch around. My wife knows it. But I can look at the resources we have and, and use them as a celebration in a holiday season uh, to be a part of this last takeaway. It's like the, alt, the, the be all, end all, give, save, live overall takeaway from the whole series. A give, save, live lifestyle. When that's your money management style, here's what you're going to experience. A life full of this moments. Pastor Mike has used that phrase, this. When we give it first and generously, when we save it and then we live, you know what happens when you come to church and you drop that, that envelope into the offering basket? You can say this because it's a celebration of God's gift to you and, and your response and love to the one who first loved you. And when you start carving the turkey this Thanksgiving, you can say, oh Lord, this. You provided with so much extra, and I get to enjoy the rest. <laughs> when you get to have presents under your tree and your kids' eyes beam with joy on Christmas morning, this, <laughs> as you provide for your family and enjoy blessings that are yours from God. And you can say this, <laughs> when your last breath happens, <laughs> because you know that, that God gave and, and Jesus saved and the Holy Spirit who lives in you will bring you to the throne of God for all eternity where you'll have life and have it to the full. I pray that God blesses us this week with so many this moments and this month as a church with this opportunities and may he give us hearts that give, that celebrate that we're saved and then live to his glory. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for your word, for your love, for the Holy Spirit who lives in us. We, we, we need Jesus' roots that, that aren't about the fear of missing out or only living once, but celebrate that we'll live forever with you in heaven, that we have great riches. And so, Lord, we want our lifestyle to be one that lines up with your heart. Give us hearts that give first and give cheerfully. Give us, give us lives that reflect the, the, the desire you have for us to save and, and then to live, to live off the rest, not with guilt, but with joy and to use it to your glory. In all these things, O oh Lord, we seek your blessing, your guidance. For you so loved the world that you gave us your one and only son. Amen.